Uh, uh, okay, let's go live. It's a vocal exercise. <laughs> Um, okay, let me know when we're live so I can watch my mouth. We are, we are live. We are live right now. Yeah. Um, for good everyone, evening, everyone. Yeah, let's start. Let's start with something like that. Good morning. Let's, let's start. Why don't you start, Ray? Because you're the you've done this before, and just please let's try our best to keep it under control and not get canceled on our first episode <laughs> me and the boys after our first podcast yeah so uh, thank you all for joining um me coach ray don idris uh, ceo of uh, king of table and this is a new project we're gonna do talk a little bit more in depth about what goes behind the scenes of uh, core sports events um at least that's what i'm thinking maybe don thinks something different uh no no that's that's good i i like to I mean, we don't really talk about what happens behind the scenes that the fans don't see and uh i just thought it would be a good idea to kind of open up and let people know what happens i mean you've probably experienced it better than anybody else you've been an athlete you've been a presenter you've been a commentator you've been a promoter you've you've seen basically the whole the entire factory if you will and uh, at the same time, use the opportunity to like just open up to questions and answer any or address any issues that, um, that yeah. the fans may have had in the past and just take suggestions on how we can improve, really. So welcome, everyone. Welcome to Behind the Table, episode one. Uh, thank you for always supporting arm wrestling. And I'd like to open by announcing that there is we have a new brand that has decided to support the sport of arm wrestling which is we need more of that the brand the company is, is the beard struggle it's not your run-of-the-mill beard oil company they do a bunch of products they do balm they do skincare products they do colognes um the, the thing the thing about the beard struggle is they fell in love with the sport. I think, was it at the last King of the Table? I think one of the um, one of the owners was actually visiting Dubai and that was the first time he actually saw an arm wrestling show live and they just completely fell in love with it. So we've been talking ever since. So just get, I want the fans to get like the idea that because their ethos is kind of like community and camaraderie, it's very similar in certain ways to the way the arm wrestling community is, like that tightly knit brotherhood if you will and they just decided to support us and because of supporters like that we can grow and we can do better shows and bigger shows so a big shout out to them thank you for jumping on board and supporting arm wrestling and as a opening sort of gift um to the arm wrestling fans they that their website is in the link just guys if you want you can go check them out and you, if you use this the promo code core sports you actually get 21% off of all their products, which I believe is the highest discount they've ever offered on any of their products. So you'll be seeing a lot more of them. You'll be hearing a lot more from them. And there is more to come on that. So thank you. And thank you for sponsoring our broad broadcast. And thank you for supporting Arm Wrestling. So that's the opener. Thank you very much. Now, First of all, uh, Beer Struggle cannot relate, you know. But uh, there's way more there. Uh, so everyone, if you have a choice, you can relate. I cannot relate. I cannot relate. But I mean, you can because for you, growing a beard is a struggle, from what I understand. Yeah, I can. I can relate to this real struggle. That's true. <laughs> but um, anyway, right. everyone, if you have a chance, and if you are already using their products, uh, if you every time you, you're going to use the code core sports they know armisters are involved in this right so that's what we're trying to make sure that the companies that are supporting our sport get something in return which is great um because right now we are living off pay-per-view model uh finding sponsors is really hard and i i can talk about just what i know don can talk in depth about this but w if we get more sponsors for these events it's safer to make these events, right? Because then you don't have to gamble a lot with, because uh, now every every event is a little bit of a gamble, right? 
No, look, every time, every time we put on a show, it's always a big risk on us, right? Because we, the, the, the costs that we put up, the costs that we guarantee is always at our own risk. And thankfully, thank you, a huge thank you to the fans from King of the Table 1 to, and then our partnership with East versus West, which kind of started roundabout East versus West 2, and right after that was King of the Table 3. So essentially, what has transpired in the last, I'd say almost three years now, has solely, solely, solely been because of the support of the fans, which we cannot thank you guys for enough. However, the idea is to always get better and to grow bigger, right? Now, everybody wants to see the sport a mainstream. And at, like if fans are supporting and we're capturing companies' attentions and they can contribute to obviously helping us grow the sport, helping us do better shows, bigger shows, more shows, and give something to the fans, it's kind of a win-win for everybody because that such a community-based um, sport that even when it gets big, I doubt it will lose that community sense. But that's just my opinion. I, would, I mean, I defer to you. What do you think? No, I think it's uh, absolutely. I think it, if we can get sponsors to cover most of the costs, right, it uh, gives opportunity to put more money in promoting to to a lot of different things that uh, right now, as as much as it is great, it's still limited, right? It is limited. And it's like every time there is a gamble, because you like, even I don't know, like, uh, I'm like, this event looks great on my eyes, but I'm a true fan, right? I love, mm -hmm. I'm a hardcore fan. And there's a difference, right? Um, maybe, maybe uh, you know, just new fans want to see just one arm so They just know Schoolboy, Devin Larratt, and... and and whisper that's all they care about right none of those guys are pulling i don't care but if you make right. everyone uh, a real fan of arm wrestling that's a difference um that is the goal that is the goal that it is just getting people to fall in love with a sport some sports are easier than others because they're just exciting sports but it's the backside of like behind the facade which is that stream the show what goes on behind that or what goes on to make it happen yeah it, it's not it's, it's not easy it's not no it takes no like, i mean you've seen how many people are actually not on screen working to make all those little pieces together the scoreboard the graphics the chalk thing i mean it's like down to the minute minutia we, from beginning to end, from the time we decide we're going to do a show on X date, I think it's, as Zena would know this better. Zena is our head of ops, by the way. I think we have like a 200 and something, like a between 8 and 15, 200 and something point checklist. Mm -hmm. All the moving parts that have to go into a show. I'm, I'm never, I'm not going to read it out here because some of it is like, chairs and i don't know placement yeah. of this and like but it's per all the things permission. Yeah. The, the end product the goal is always to make whatever happens in the background not appear and the show to seem seamless right so the, the good thing is i think i'm very very happy that i work with whether it's in turkey or whether it's in dubai I've always been lucky enough to work with teams that are very good at um, thinking on their feet. So if there's a problem that seems catastrophic at that moment, believe me, we try our best to fix it as quickly as possible. Sometimes even when it's not in our control, hmm. whether it's an audio fail or a satellite failure, the internet drop, I mean, there's a, billion and one things that have gone wrong that probably fans are not aware of what they see is oh there's a glitch in the stream but if they <laughs> if somebody was filming an actual behind the scenes that we don't usually let people see that everything in the background the back is on fire essentially metaphorically and sometimes realistic sometimes for real <laughs> Uh, let, let's, <laughs> let's let's go back. Let's uh, how, how did you get involved in this? Because this is arm wrestling is not your world, right? How did you get involved in the first uh, King of the Table? 
Well, we used to we used to do um, still to a certain degree. We, we do shows. I mean, we do shows and events, and, and that's basically our, our bread and butter. And I believe this was 2021. It was right after. It was still kind of half lockdown and COVID, like things that started opening up. Yeah, I'm not, I don't remember. I was I was working with Larry at the time, and Michael Todd and Devin. He was bringing over all these arm wrestlers from all over the world to train and shoot content for them. But during that period, I think I mean Larry did a lot from a promotion. And it was a thing where there was a potential match and Michael Todd, Deborah Larratt. Now it just happened to be sitting in the room and, you know, just, just back and forth at the gym. And then Larry comes up to me. He's like, look, we have this opportunity. I don't, I have no experience in how to put on a show. That Until then, we had done boxing. We had done MMA. We had done strongman to a huge um, scale. We had actually done... An online series during COVID, but during lockdown, we were the only company producing some kind of live content, feats of strength, we called it. We got an episode on ESPN every week. Mm-hmm. So COVID was like gold mine for us. Um, he's like, do you want to be involved? I'm like, okay, what's what's the story? Like it's arm wrestling. I'm like, I don't know much about it. I run a show, but I mean, arm wrestling when I was a kid in school, that's basically it. He introduced me to my Todd. Then I started looking into it, doing a bit of research. All right, this is this is exciting, and we can we can we can do this. But where's the revenue? So I'm like, all right, pay per view, mm, risky. Ninety nine percent. No, 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 I'm lying. Eighty five to ninety percent of sales are done in the last hour. Generally, yeah. So until the show starts. You actually don't know if you're going to sell your car or you're going to be able to buy a new car. It is the most nerve wracking thing ever. And, but it kind of didn't seem like it really existed, the pay per view model in the arm wrestling world. And fortunately or unfortunately, however you want to see it, there was a couple of years where nothing had happened, no major competitions had happened in the arm wrestling. And we were already doing. Fight nights. We were one of the first companies that Dubai allowed to organize sports events, obviously with the two meters apart chairs and all of that. So we had an event on already on May 28th, 2021, I believe, um, Mm -hmm. the Conrad Hotel. I'm like, you know what? Yeah, it was day before. How many? Day before. Tour exhibition. Day before. No, it was the same night later. Right. Yes. Day, right. Yes. Yeah. Remember, you were competing, right? It was you against Mazahir, I believe, yeah. correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, and there was Larry versus Schoolboy yeah. and Michael Todd versus Devin. Three matches only. In that hotel room, essentially what happened is the fight night finished because we decided if it's pay-per-view, we want to hit all the peak times, uh, US, mm-hmm. so like the you know, 3 p.m. Uh, Eastern uh, noon Pacific, whatever. So it worked out perfectly because the setup was already there. So we what we did is we did a reset of an hour when the fight night finished and we moved around the cameras, just put up a table on that horrendous looking carpet. <laughs> Do you remember that? I carpet remember. Yeah. Doing a bad mushroom trip. <laughs> and, and the people, there was like what? 15 people there the crowd was like 15 people sitting two meters apart they were dead silent. oh my god but man i was like how are we gonna do this funny story about that night there was a shift change in the satellite truck between the fight night and this but the first guy didn't tell the second guy when we were gonna go on so the second guy kind of vanished so up until Two minutes before we opened King of the Table 1, we didn't know if we were going to have a live stream or not, right? I was literally pooping myself, running around the place. But we'll get into that later. So, and that's it. We did it. And I looked at the numbers. I'm like, huh. Interesting. I think to this day, it was probably in terms of numbers. It was probably the third, I think, the third most successful arm wrestling event that Force Sports has done. It was... A huge everyone, success. Everyone was hungry. Everyone was hungry. Yeah. And the hype was so big. And 
the the whole Dubai scene was crazy because, like you said, no, nothing was going on, right? There was nothing in the world of Armisen. Okay. So all eyes are on this card. Uh, plus, a lot of people saw Michael Todd as the number one, number two guy at that yeah. point. And Devon was coming back, and can Devon do this? And then the magic happened, right? It, um, yeah, like a story, like a fairy book, you know, story starts. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah, and then that just said, just that, that spoke, that answered all the questions that, at least from a business and from a show perspective that I had, I'm like, all right, you know what? This is definitely something we want to do. By the time we did King of the Table 2, where we had Devin versus John, and uh, uh, I think, was it Rodecha versus, or was it what? I, I don't really remember. My memory is completely blurred. That was December the same. Hermes and Kodetsch, I think. No, Hermes and uh, Gennady. Hermes and Gennady. Hermes and Gennady, yes, that's, that, that was the one. That was the one. Um, that's, that's the only one I wasn't there for, yeah. And that's it. I think come February, no, no, probably even January, um, I, I received a message from, I don't remember who it was, but it was a set, setting up a call with Engen. And then we talked about it. He's like, okay, well, I'm doing East versus West. You guys are doing a pay-per-view. And that, that's how the partnership and the friendship started, really. And I don't know, but it just, it just seems so surreal to me. So much has changed since we first started. And it's gotten so big. And I'm not only talking about us as promoters. Maybe it's because I'm more focused on it, but you tell me from an outsider's perspective, in the last three years, has arm wrestling as a sport grown? Like never before, maybe, like maybe never. in the eighties when when uh, over the top came out, right? Maybe, yeah. maybe that was kind of big boom, but this one is different. Like there's more com people just like they know arm wrestling, right? They know arm wrestling, yeah. they know arm wrestlers, yeah. and there's uh, I think every every country you I go to competitions are two three times bigger, which is insane, right? Yeah, you did the Italian thing recently, right? Yeah, yeah. Hermes was telling me that last year they had 250 or something competitors. This year there was 1,000 competitors. Uh, 600, 600, 600, yeah. 600? Yeah. Including the amateurs? I, I don't know why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah. He, so some yeah, maybe, maybe triple number. That I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like that. It was insane, insane. Uh, it's crazy. Glasses are bigger. Every, everyone, like uh, Hermes there is a god emperor, right? Uh, so... All this is definitely, you know, do, doing its work. And I think never before, I think the promotions and promoters are doing things right, right? I think it's 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 working like it should be working. And uh, this is why we are here. But like every time... I'm glad. Sorry, sorry, go on. No, go, go. Every go. time? Go, go, go. No, I was just going to say, I'm very happy that systematically and over a period of time, I can very, very confidently say that our initial vision of core sports sort of becoming the home of arm wrestling, like this is where you go to buy arm wrestling. And mm -hmm. fortuitously, that has now become core sports is the home of the best arm wrestlers in the world and the two best promotions in the world. It's essentially, this is it's, it's kind of like autopilot. Oh, I, I want to watch... Uh, any of the top 20 guys competing, oh, I know where to go and buy it. Here's either at East versus West or King of the Table. That, that is, there's a sense of accomplishment there, selfish or not. I'm very, very proud to say that, yeah, it is now the home to the best arm wrestlers, best promoters. And we proudly listen to the fans. I mean, like, I, I, I know that every time a fan has said something, aside from, you know, the usual percentage of Troll. hate, no matter what. I, I think they're trolls because it, 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 those people can't be real. Like I see some comments. I try to stay away from the comment section because, mm, but you see some things and you're like, that, that can't be a person. That that's some kind of robot. I mean, you help me out here. I'm an internet like I'm pretty naive when it comes to these things. I don't know what the difference between a troll and a bot is. Maybe you can help me. But is it true that people somehow manufacture fake accounts to go and blast bullshit on somebody's comments. Does that exist or is that just a myth? 
Oh no, it exists. I know a lot of people will, so, someone will leave a mean comment and then they're literally talking with themselves with from different account answering and they don't even, they're not even smart enough to not follow themselves from that account. So you go and you do like, this is the same person, right? They're having conversation with themselves and there's always like uh, hate no matter what, right? I just don't like you. So there's always those, Why? those ones. Why? Like, but um, I think um, like, like if you look at first king of the table, you look at first east versus west, you look just in the middle, it all has changed, right? Yeah. Um, like visually, uh, I think the stream, the the, the problems, the things we're, we're trying to control as much as we can. Like there's like the, the, the stream and sometimes it being, you know, lagging or something. Like one time we have to do east versus west when there was a storm outside, like literal storm, right? And, well, and you, thank you for bringing that up. So <clears throat> to address our beloved fans, I'm addressing the fans directly. Guys, I promise you now, because whether it's East versus West or Four Sports, I'm kind of like in the, or sort of responsible for the actual broadcast, right? And the transmission. So there ha most of the times if something goes wrong, it is not like, majorly wrong like the stream gets cut or has to get restarted something like that eight nine times out of ten it is due to an unforeseen circumstance this is this is the unexpected part of the title the good the bad and the unexpected mm -hmm. this is a perfect example you gave us i'm not sure which east versus west it was it could have been nine i think it was number nine um, i think it was it number happened. ten because i remember i went up and i was like this is the biggest one and because I was in a satellite truck and I gave the video to Zayn, if I'm sure, if I'm correct there. Was it 10? The, the maybe, Denison? And, uh, maybe it also could have been. No, nine. man. Maybe. maybe it could have been. Nine. Oh, whatever. That, that's regardless. So the stream, essentially what happened is some crazy, crazy rainstorm and wind. It just knocked the satellite out of position. Suddenly we lost the signal. Now, there was a five second or six second delay by the time I heard it on the radio that we've lost the feed to the actual viewer losing the feed. But in those five seconds, which seems like an eternity at the time, you have to call a guy to cut the stream, quickly put the backup system on, because we always kind of have some kind of a backup system, whether it's 4G bonding or backup internet. We always have backup, but that process may take a minute. Mm -hmm. So in that time, I'm, I'm telling you, it is the most, like you're, you're basically in a heart attack mode because the last thing we want is to disappoint the pain customer. And the pain customer doesn't know what the reason is. It's not like yeah, they an don't automatic message comes up and says, due to lightning, I don't know, lightning stuck yeah. the truck. Yeah. Struck the truck. <laughs> they don't know. All they're seeing is I paid for something. I'm watching it. It's now cut. This is bullshit. Yeah. And they're right. You're right, but I thought maybe if they know that sometimes things happen, and believe me, fixing one signal lost and replacing it with another backup system to feed in a minute is quite an effort. And l luckily, we do always have mechanisms in place. And if something, we always learn, and that's why we keep getting better and better and better. If now we know that this circumstance needs to be catered for, so next time we'll be better prepared, and next time we'll be better prepared. So. Um, <laughs> I'm just trying to think. I'm trying to think. Maybe I shouldn't mention it. There was some something else once went wrong. I think I think it was a um, complete circuit board burn in the audio mixer. I don't remember which event it was. I think it was one of King of the Tables, and suddenly there was this static sound. You remember that? You've pretty much done all of them. There was a I wasn't no comment. Second. Maybe it was the second one, but that. I'm trying to I'm trying to remember. Essentially the big yoke that distributes the sound and yeah. the sound it just it just I, sparked out, it just burnt out. Right? Some kind of power uh, distrib unequal power distribution. It, it used to be a lot worse because we used to change venues, right? Mm -hmm. Especially in Dubai. Either it's a hotel or it's a gym. But I think the last few kings of the table and the last few East was because you've got the same venue. 
So you're familiar with the infrastructure. You've got the same team. So repeat, repeat, repeat. The chances of something unexpectedly going wrong, I'm not saying it's always going to be zero, but minimizing the chances is, you know, that that's, and I think the fans can tell us themselves. I mean, streams have been getting better. Our customer support inbox has reduced in terms of demands for refunds, complaints, uh, because we usually fix the problem very quickly. Now, speaking of customer service, I think it's maybe time to explain to the fans when you, I think pay per view is a misnomer. So pay per view historically means you pay per view, you watch it once and then it's gone. But with Core Sports, whether it's East versus West or King of the Table, when you buy the match or the event, you can rewatch it as many times as you want for a whole year. So if you can't watch it live because of work or whatever, you can watch it later. Now, most of the time, the biggest complaint, and fans in the comment section can maybe correct me if I'm wrong, is the replay is not uploading. So guys, from a tech perspective, I looked into this and I was just as pissed off as you were, but we are not as powerful as YouTube where a live stream ends and it's immediately available. Mm. Watch, it takes about depending on the length of the show, it takes about three, four hours for the Good replay. Processes and everything, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. If, so if big East versus West is going to take a time. It's going to take some time, right? We've kind of even worked out how to compress that time so it's usually available. We don't want to guarantee that it'll be available within an hour because that sometimes happens, sometimes it doesn't, right? But within four to five hours, it's available again. Uh, to replay and watch for those who missed it. So we get these messages like, ah, I paid for it. I missed it at work and now it's not loading. You guys are frauds. Give me my money back. <laughs> right. And then, then they get a response saying, please check now. And they're like, oh no, it's working now. It's all good. So it's, it, that is a whole other type of stress because again, the last thing we want to do is disappoint the paying customer. But guys, please bear with us when it comes to watching the event after the live ends, it needs a few hours to be available and then it's available to you for all um, those are usually the messages that i get on instagram like how long does it gonna take i said and i usually just respond i'm like check it in the morning it's gonna be fine and their response is it's already morning here Sorry. <laughs> well guys rest assured we're always trying to do better and i mean like, like Ray said in the beginning, with that now with the help of new sponsors coming on board and your consistent support, I mean, I've, we've got customers that have bought each and every pay-per-view event. I mean, that's proper loyalty. And um, yeah, it just keeps going like this. We, we keep reinvesting. We keep trying to, whether it's better microphones, whether it's better cameras, whether it's better, you, you know, I mean, so thank you for your patience with us. Audio, I think that's another complaint we get. Fix your audio. The audio is not right. This is not that. I mean, last king of the table, I'll give you an example. Do you remember, was it Mask and Derek where we lost uh, Matt Mask's mic? Yeah. As he slammed the thing and the mic flew off. Yeah. Quite a funny moment, and I wish it was captured on camera. It was me on the floor creeping, crawling like a four-year-old to grab the mic so that nobody steps on it, going, Matt, Matt, look at that, Matt, Matt's going, man, <laughs> telling the director to put the camera on Derek so I can mic him up again and he can go back, right? It's little, th it's little things like that, the, the, the mic transmission, because in Dubai, we always have a freelance crew because there's like camera operators, the camera setup. That crew alone is like 15, 20 people, and they're not always the same people, right? The director is the same. I mean, we're always working with different people. So sometimes things are not optimal to start with. Like at the start of the stream, the sound is not good. But we're, I think we fix things pretty quickly. But if fans have some feedback and if they have some ideas and if they can help us get better, yeah. um, I'm all ears, yeah. as I'm sure Ray is. Speaking of Matt Mask. You want to bring Matt on? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I kind of wanted to walk, to talk about 
I don't know what the fans think of our walkouts, but Matt loves a good walk. Matt kind of always has the same song. And I love, I mean, the, the one thing that the team allows me full freedom in is choreographing the walkouts. Yeah. Um, I have, let, me, let me see. I have too many videos of Don just uh, walking out, pretending he's a puller. <laughs> yeah. So you get or... <laughs> full 360 spin, you bow to the fans, and go back. Yeah. Well, no, good. look, I strongly, let me, let me just quickly, uh, What are you doing right now? Uh, Important. Yeah, walkouts are a cool addition. I also like them. I think it's uh, for for an athlete. To me, you just you just get thrown in. But if you have a, like a walkout, a little bit of mute, it is it's it's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. Well, thank you, thank you for saying that because like look, especially when we. Like the fights that we've done. I don't know. From a it's a grand entrance. That's the athlete's moment. That's when they're in war mode. You've got the focus head on. And I'm sure whether you're an athlete or not, pretty much everybody has kind of, when they're alone, imagined, you know, walking out into a crowd or a gladiator arena with some kind of epic music in the background. It's just in our nature, right? So why not? give him the opportunity to do that if it's choreographed and if we can help him say, you know what, this will look better if, for example, you start the song from this segment, you know? Okay, forgive me if I'm very anal retentive about this, but I, I'm just so, it's an art, I think. And again, I hope we're doing a good job with the walkouts, capturing that we don't always have the freedom with the special effects that I want. This is, can't get the permits for some of the stuff I want. It's mostly fire related, but we'll leave that for another episode. Um, but that that moment, I mean, I try to get athletes to imagine until we get to the time when you are walking out into stadiums. Just if you can close your eyes and visualize going out to two, three thousand fans, they're all cheering. This is your moment, and that's yeah. what we want them to feel. Because that's it. You're going into battle at a table, none of the, like it may be, but it's still the same in your head. You're still the same mode, right? I mean, you tell me. It is. It is. It is. I, I like. It. I think. I think it's really cool. And uh, I'm always more nervous because I have to walk out, and it's slow. Usually, you just get to the thing, but you walk out, and I don't know. I'm usually like everyone's like trying to be mean or something. I'm just happy. I'm happy because I like Armas thing. I like to Armas. I'm like, <laughs> I, I get the messages after my last one. They're like, why are you smiling when you walked out? I'm like, because I love it. Because I love it. <laughs> that is true. Let me try. Let me try Derek. Let's see what he's up to. That's another one that he filmed the entire behind the scenes um, uh, at the last King of the Table. So, Look at that. Hello, Derek. We are live on YouTube. Did you, what are you doing? What are you wearing? <laughs> I am not, I'm not going to repeat that on the live stream. Do me a favor. We were, we we're just talking about stuff behind the scenes. And you, I remembered you were you pretty much Instagram live the whole thing. Do you, do you have like two minutes if I send you, if Ray or I send you a Zoom link to jump on? Do you mind? Can you please put some clothes on, though? This is a, this is a family friendly live stream. <laughs> oh my God, you're terrible. All right, I'm WhatsApping you a link now. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to send him a link. I'm sending him a link okay. now. Okay. Yeah. Matt didn't respond, and Eric just picked up the phone. Awesome. Yeah, no respect from Matt Mass. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah, that's it. Now yeah. Matt's now a persona non grata. Yeah, blacklisted. <laughs> Somewhat. That's not a wild horse at all. He can't even. Why is he not available when we want him to be ready? Why is he not available? I don't understand. That's very, very, very disrespectful. All I'm gonna say. All I'm gonna say. And we have Derek. We have Derek. 
Where is he at? If he'll be naked, it's going to be the best episode ever. No, he promised to put on a shirt at least. You should never ask those things. It's Stop controlling your arm wrestlers, okay? <laughs> oh, look at that. Hey, Derek. What's up, gay dog? Yeah. What is that? Did you just woke up? Did you just woke up? Yeah, dude, it's 10 o'clock on the West Coast. Oh, okay. What's going on, Derek? Good to see you, man. What's up? What's going on? Look at this. Is this the first installment of this Core Sports podcast? Yeah. And you Yeah, are... it's called Behind the Table. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Behind the scenes of King of the Table. But we needed you some personality. We, we needed some personality. <laughs> so we're like, hey, how about we get this? Yeah. All right. What is you... going on? What's up? Nothing much, man. Nothing much. We're just talking about how the sausage is made. Oh, uh, yeah. Behind the scenes stuff. And then it came to my mind that, am I correct in assuming you, you kind of like the day you arrived, you were walking around the venue unsupervised doing an Instagram live. Oh you yeah, like, um, yeah. In the in the other wing, but yeah, in the other side of the thing. But yeah, like if, if you've got time, we wanted your take on like from an athlete's perspective. You pretty much, I think, got to witness everything that happens behind the scenes firsthand. Whether it's the airport pickups, whether it's the hospitality staff, whether it's the transportation, whether it's getting to the venue, whether it's the prep work, whether it's the like fifty minions that are building stuff. The lights and the rigging and all of that. You pretty much saw all of that. So what did you th did you think first of all, did you think that this amount of work goes into producing that what we try to be make a perfect, seamless show and stream? I mean, how did you feel? Just I'll open up the question. How did you feel as that? I mean, first and foremost, I was surprised that I was gonna have to walk from the airport to the venue. Um, that was a bit of a struggle because it was hot. That was a mistake. And I do apologize. I'm a big guy. I'm a big guy. But yeah. more than that, it was just sleeping in the cargo part of the plane was the part that was really rough for me because I'm so large. I don't fold up very nicely. Um, but then getting there and things like that, I really appreciate the crackers and stuff you guys are handing out and the uh, the little the little packets of water. I didn't know they made packets of water, like you know, like ketchup sized packets yeah. or just a water. That was weird. But oh, uh, we, I, we call it a bladder yeah. bag. It's called a bladder yeah. bag, and that wasn't Appreciate water. It. I adapted yeah, pretty I, quick, though. I, I must say, I, I bounced. <laughs> no, in all seriousness, uh, the King Table, um, the experience was was fantastic. Um, they, I had a driver with a sign waiting for me when I got picked up, and that was like, you know, I made it. Apparently, I made it. Now I'm at the I'm at the top. Of, I'm at the top of the food so chain. Bougie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, no, did you, it was. Did you uh, take the sign from him, and you're just like. Yeah, there was a bit of a struggle because he, he didn't know who I was yet, and I started wrestling the sign out of his hand. And he was a smaller guy, you know what I mean? And so, not as big as you, right? And so we were we were going at it and tussling. Security had to get called, but then I under, you know I explained who I was, and it was all okay. Um, but yeah, getting taken to uh, the hotel was fantastic. I mean, we were treated amazing, right? It was it was nice, you know. It was nice to be recognized for. We like the spoiler. Skill. All the skills that like I thought I had until I lost. You know, it was great to be recognized for those skills. Oh, uh, stop it. Stop, until stop the it. Get over it. You'll be fine. <laughs> Come um, on. Come on. But, I, no, I, re I, remember, I remember one of the crew asked Derek. Uh, they're like, oh, you're going to win? And Derek was like, that's not why they invited me. <laughs> it was for <laughs> my son. <laughs> <Maybe they're laughs> it's because I'm so beautiful. Um, yes, yes. But, you were purely eye candy, Derek. That's why we invited you. But uh, deal, deal I also, with the I also team. think you were ear candy. I think uh, commentating yeah. that was fun. Thank you, fun. thank you, Ray. Oh. I appreciate that. If you were next to me, I'd pat you on the head. Um, <laughs> so the uh, <laughs> uh, but no, honestly, like um, dealing with 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 course sports in general, you know, through my experiences at East First West, um, and then more, you know, your show at King of the Table. I've I've always had a great time dealing with with Hannah and and all, and all the people, right? Um, and so. You know, you know what the funny thing is? What I what I tell people sometimes when I first met you, Don, at East First West, I was um, I mm. didn't really know who was who and who did what with core sports and who was what. Right? And I was still trying to figure things out, but I was trying to focus on commentating and getting the East First West thing going. So I remember <clears throat> we uh, you came into the booth my very first time there. You're like, "Does anybody need anything? Any drinks?" And I'm like, "This guy's awesome! Like, who? 
who is I, like, I don't know <laughs> i don't know who he is and then i was like well yeah i'll take you know this 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 like, yeah right away you came over and you brought all the drinks for everybody and i was like dude this guy's great man someone needs to get this guy a raise you know like i'm thinking to myself like this guy needs to be taken care of he's on on point and then i found out later that you own core sports and i was like wait that was the other <laughs> i was like oh sweet i was like all right well dude that's that's great and so um any, from from day one, oh. you've, been take, you've been taking care of me and showing the best hospitality. So, um, but the uh, I think, yeah, I, think, I mean, in, in my opinion, that's I think I, I, I like it. You, you got to be the highest head on the totem pole and the lowest at the same time. Right. Like I've been the amount of times I've been the water boy. Like it's, mm-hmm. it doesn't bother. I mean, look, the people who are doing all the work sometimes as a comic or as an MC. Sometimes all you want is a is a bathroom break or a or a water because your throat is tight. I mean, like if I'm there and I'm not, I, I can't I can't sit still during a show. I have to be doing something. Yeah. Or if my all my job tick boxes personally, I'm going from personal basis are ticked. All right, is there somewhere I can lend a hand? Does anybody need a break? Does anybody need a something? It's just it's just the way I I kind of go into autopilot. But I remember the time you were talking about. You kept giving me this look like. Who the fuck are you? You're, you're not an arm wrestler. You're no. not like. What are you like? I mean, who is this guy running around yelling in a radio with a microphone? <laughs> and one minute he's got like, Argh. the other minute he's like, do you guys want some water? <laughs> right? yeah, so there's a lot of moving parts, right? <laughs> you know, I was like, I have a job, microphone. You know, my little buddy Ray. I was like, we're gonna just handle this. And uh, my and little, Ray. <laughs> say hello to my little friend Ray. <laughs> oh my. I Ray, can't let understand that if it, it's true, right? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this one, honestly, I, I mean, I saw two different, two not two different sides of you, but obviously more more engaged with you for this one for King of the Table and, and dealing with you directly a lot more and um, breath of fresh air for sure. Uh, the professionalism and and the way you handle the athletes and you handle me and the attention to detail. And I've never thought that so much thought would go into a walkout song in my life, but I'm really glad we got over that hump in our relationship that, and uh, we got it all figured out. Uh, but yeah. after, when, when the stream went down, Oh my gosh, you guys should have seen it on when the stream crashed. You got, I was like, I was getting oh. trying to give updates. I was on, on YouTube giving live updates into the chat. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Are you not the stream? You're talking about the press conference. Press conference. Yeah. Sorry. Press conference. Yeah. The face off, sir. Oh, 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 oh. Dude, I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting. No, I'm like this. Like he doesn't even have hair, but his hair was like. He's like, oh, the fuck? <laughs> so I fixed this, and he's like, he was running around, and I go up to him afterwards, and I, <laughs> I just see, I just see action in the back. So I don't know all the people. I just see movement and action and running and yelling, and then uh, after it got all situated, I remember asking you, I was like, what happened, man? And you're just like. Just so you know, like <laughs> you look, you looked at me as, as if I had done something, you know. And you're like someone like made a mistake, and you're like, long story short, this wire doesn't plug into this wire. <laughs> and I was like, is the guy gonna be okay? He has a family, right? And you're like, we'll be, it'll be dealt with. And I'm like, yeah, this is a, this is a lot, but I'm glad you, you're you're that passionate about it. It's great. It's long great. story short, that was a well, fire. I mean, yeah, <laughs> long story short, there was a fire, and someone's now missing. But for okay. the fans who just see, see this chaos of a conversation right now, let me simplify it. The live stream or the press conference got cut right in the middle. Uh, forget about the technical details and the cables and the wiring. For the layman, the electric wire caught fire. And the guys who I believe Ray was telling me, I, I, I don't remember, it was a, suddenly everything went silent. The only voice is me shouting the weirdest profanities. The guys were holding the live wires in their hands, trying to like fix the problem while the wire was on fire. I just lost my shit because aside from the fact that, like, okay, not only did you make the dumbest mistake of putting the wrong wire in the wrong thing, more electricity than the cable could handle, you're gonna die. I don't want somebody dying on my show, no matter. I don't want people I hate dying on my show, let alone the people who were working there. So it was like half angry, half freaked out, half shitting myself. So, and I think I turned around and apologized to everybody because I don't remember what I said. I just, like, so like thank that. you for filling me in on, on what I happened. Was, I was by the bar. I was, I was getting a drink. Uh, I was waiting for coffee. And I just, at, at one point, just all went silent. And it just Don shouted. And I don't get it. What? And I'm waiting. I don't even pay attention to it. And then I turn, and nothing's changed on the stage. 
And then I think Derek came over. I'm like, what happened? Derek goes, there was a fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ray was over there with his building oh, blocks, his Lincoln logs. We put him in the corner usually. He has a little space, so he has some time to himself. And then uh, when he turned around, after his juice box was empty, he turned around and we were just like, hey, Ray, something went bad over here. He was a little shocked. You yeah. got to get a little more involved. Oh. You, rem you remember what I told you? Gugu Gaga. <laughs> Gugu Gaga. <laughs> exactly. Oh, it's, uh, it's funny now. <laughs> At that time, it was not ha ha funny. Man, okay, so we we lost Matt. We do not have Matt Mask. Sorry, right, we'll talk about his walkout and other stuff in another time. Wait, you guys were having I mean, Matt on before you brought me on? Is yeah, it? I, see, see, you are taking pot shots at me. This is now. This is personal, right? Matt wins. Matt comes in first. Derek loses. Derek comes in second. This is this was the plan. There's wow. nothing personal. There was nothing personal. Wow, Con. Because Matt has done more walkouts with me than anyone. Oh, speaking of your walkout, are you talking about when we sat at breakfast? I'm like, mm, Derek, this song is extreme heavy metal. However, in my opinion, if you started from here and ended here, you might. What was that the time you were talking about? Or I was trying to talk you into. No, I'm, saying, I'm just saying in general. I mean, we were talking about the walkout song for like a month and a half prior to the, <laughs> the event, you know, and like <laughs> at what point we want to like. And I loved it. That's great. I, I I got to like really think about a song because I think uh, at East First West they were I don't know if there is a song they were just kind of playing whatever and then we walk out and so it was well, nice to be able to like uh, their YouTube is I think Engin is very specific about because um, you can get like we, we can get into some real tr look on core sports we can play whatever the hell we want because it's yeah, our yeah. own all right but when it goes on YouTube then it's kind of like. Mm. It's a bit risky. You never know when Sony or somebody is like <laughs> cut you off. So, um, did you did you get the? I WhatsApped you a video afterwards. I screen recorded the because I, I tried something new with the walkouts this time. I wanted the guys to like focus on the faces and then zoom out. Mm -hmm. Did you get that little video I sent you of your you looking all mean and just yeah. lights all over your face? Said, did you, you got that right? Yeah, and people made fun of me about my face. But that happens. Well, you, you could have responded to my message. Didn't you quit the What the shit. hell is going on here? This is shit. What? I mean, you focus on the important part, right? And that's okay, the money maker. Uh, it's just, <laughs> I, I, will, I don't intentionally make a face, but when I'm that hyped up, my face morphs into a certain thing. You know what I mean? Because I'm pretty angry and, and focused. So apparently that face is not as, uh, it's not very nice. It's not very uh, pleasant. Uh as they as they say in germany ein minuten bitter uh see yeah my zoom is matt mask uh, i'll just send you the link dude so he still wants to bring on matt and matt's gonna just talk talk about you know <laughs> your hand yeah, guys, you, you guys want to continue let me just call him and see if he has time yeah let me just call him real quick. yeah Someone said I look skinny in the chat. I brought up the chat. I am 328 as of last night. I'm back. I've been training hard, getting jacked. Nah, and ripped. He says, give me a second. He doesn't, he doesn't read his mic. He's so new to the podcast thing. <laughs> he's, it's innocent. It's really cute. It's innocent and cute that how new he is to the uh, podcast game. Well, take a break. We're live on YouTube. At the start, he was, he was like very, very, you know, scared. Do you want to join us for a couple of Open up the cloud. No, just let it all in. Oh, you're you're guiding it, Ray. You're you're building this. No, I'm I'm just uh, if I could, I would be like just stop, just cut it, cut it, cut it out. Thank you. And yeah. so the chat knows Ray is personally working with me on my programming. Right, I'm getting way stronger. We have plans. Okay, it's growth and gains coming. Com com complete life. I don't want to be part of that mess. Come on. What? What mess? Be, you know, All right, I've sent, I've sent uh, uh, <laughs> Ray, Ray, keep an eye out, please. Um, Matt joins. Is Matt coming in here? Yeah. Do we? Yes. Do, okay, Derek. Matt's coming in. Do you want me to get rid of Derek? <laughs> no, why would we get rid of Derek? Oh, okay. Awesome. What the hell are you wearing? Okay. And Matt's coming in. Oh, God. Oh, my God. What, what 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 am I hosting here? What what, what is this? Yeah. Hey Matt, if you're gonna get in the podcast game, Don. You oh. have to have props on hand. This is part of the game, so you know. Yeah. I okay, fine. I would say Matt, Matt, you, can start, you hear us? 
yeah. you start every. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Playing guitar. <laughs> we can hear you, Matt. We can hear you, Matt. But we oh, can't yeah. see you. Can't see you though. Yeah. I don't know how the fuck to do that. Silence. You need cigarette, Ray. Can you see me now? Nope. Nope. Your camera is just off. Just... Mm -hmm. I don't know how the fuck to access this shit. Forgive okay. Matt. His fingers aren't normal. Aren't very. A lot of dexterity there with the. We brought Matt in for one reason. One reason. Yeah, let me let me try something. Roast Derek Smith. Oh my God! No, no, this is not a roast. Leave the man alone. This is not a oh, roast, God. Derek Smith. Wow, Don, I was just singing your praises on how professional how Core Sports is, and this is the shit you hit me with. You got Ray over here. That was a. That was I, not, I have my own kids to deal with. I have my own kids to deal with, Don. I don't have to deal with this kid as well. Okay, I don't need this from all angles. Yeah. She's bigger than him too. My my Derek. twelve year old's taller than Ray. Stand up when you talk shit to me. Oh, you're standing up, huh? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay. Control. <laughs> this is not an ambush on Derek Smith. Hilarious though it may be. But, um, uh, hi, Matt. Have you figured out the camera yet? And Matt oh, Mass joined oh. from another one. There's two of them. What is going on here? I just <laughs> let Matt Mask in, but Matt Mass still is on. Are you doing two phones? Two phones. Oh, hey, you see me now? Hey, yeah. what is up? What's going on? Yeah. What's Are you driving? Yeah, I just finished <laughs> blowing snow on one of my Airbnbs. It's snowing here right now. So, okay. Well, we don't want you to crash and die. So, we're going to be real quick. Well, I we just, I just to... won't watch you. You can watch me. Okay. I'll listen. That's... <laughs> it's like my every webcam experience that I've ever had. So, okay. Um, we were talking about, just bring it back to professionalism for a second, just for one minute. Um, we were talking about walkouts and all the shit, the stuff that happens behind the scenes that the fans don't get to see. And I kind of thought of you because you and they I don't want to see it anyways. They don't want to see it. They don't want to, but it's, it's <laughs> good to know. I mean, like you specifically, um, I think I've walked you through and choreographed a bunch of different times, whether it was at East vs. West or King of the Table and the cues and all of that. And you, I think you've always had the same song. You pretty much have the same uh, song always. For the right? most part, yeah. 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 And I know one thing about you. You you, you only speak to me in sign language Usually, right yeah. before going out. You've got your earphones in, right? And you're like... <laughs> you don't have to scream, man. I mean, just, you can read your lips. So, just wondering how you feel, like how you how you see that whole experience and the work we put in behind the scenes. What's your your take on it? Honest opinion. Wrong answers only. Uh, wrong answers only. <laughs> ah, I say it's uh, it's more for it's not to do with us. It's not to do with uh, with anything. But I'd say the production. Or for the aspect of what the people get to see when you first enter out, right? So it's usually, it's usually more so just me trying to get in my zone as for directions and what you say, count to three, do this, and you're going to walk out. I usually forget all that shit. That's usually why you're standing hiding behind a curtain and I say, give me a tap when I got to do the next thing, right? So <laughs> it's more so, more so me just trying to get in my mind, but it's, it's the visual aspect for everybody out there watching that gets to see, you know, the hype as the guy's coming out on stage, right? So, but then, like, d does all the your song, the special effects, the way you walk out, that does that help get you in the zone? Does that help amplify that moment in your head? I know you've got your ear oh. earphones in, but does that add to the? The grandeur of your entrance, if, I, if you will. I, I'd say it's the it's the little straw that breaks the camel's back to get the last little bit of hair standing up on the back of your neck just to, she's go time, right? So right. I usually, right. usually not really paying much attention to anything, but until, until I get that tap, and then when it's my turn to walk out and you kind of 
I, I kind of don't really pay attention to the crowd. I don't look at anybody until it's my turn to walk out. And then I kind of open my eyes and I look and I see everybody standing there waiting for me to enter. And that's kind of the last little bit of little tingle that yeah. I need to make myself feel good. Right. So. And like everything else in the back, whether you, you've seen, I mean, you've worked with our team a bunch of times from, from the moment you get the call to the booking of the flights to the hotels. I mean, like you, is there something, and this is a question for both you and Derek, is there something from an athlete's perspective that you could tell us that we could improve on that would make more money? Uh, yeah, more, more fucking money. <laughs> no, no, that's not going to happen. This, this I cannot do. This I cannot do. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Aside from the obvious guys, I'm talking about the actual yeah. workflow. First, no, I say I say everything for the most part's fairly smooth. Uh, the only thing I would suggest maybe leading up is uh, more more sharing of uh, the social content or anything that you guys have gotten forth. Like a few times, I have to ask, "Hey, can we get can we get more pictures or shit like that that we can post or right. the posters stuff like that?" Other than that, I'd say I'd say we're pretty well taken care of behind the scenes. I don't really have too many complaints. So, you know, there's, there's wow. always plenty of water there for us. There's always lots of room where we can chill, relax, get into our zone. People aren't constantly coming up to you, hounding you, asking you questions while you're trying to get ready. Right. So it's no, I'd say you guys do a pretty bang up job for the most part. So. Eric, can we improve a little um, bit? Somehow? I mean, somebody in the chat just said a, uh, a dozen hot Japanese women escorting each puller to the stage. Now, I would definitely not like that because, you know, I would never disrespect my girlfriend Bridget like that. But if you guys needed that for your for your end of things, like, you know, I mean, I could make it happen and it, that would be whatever. You know, uh, I was actually worried about Matt a little bit when they were walking, when they announced him, because right when he walked out of the smoke, we locked eyes across the room. And I didn't know if he could see the floor underneath him. I thought he was going to walk off the stage. I was kind of hoping he was going to walk off the stage, but I was kind of worried he was going to walk off the stage as well. when he was walking out because we were locked in. We were locked in. But maybe someone guiding no, him like, had, for like a bell while they're walking so he knows where to go? Well, no, we had a better thing. We had the cameraman walking backwards, controlling the speed. So if yeah, anything, if anyone was going to trip, it was going to be the cameraman first. And then Matt right. would have tripped on the cameraman, uh, who then would have tripped on the cameraman's guide. I'll we be honest, systems in place. I kind of wanted him to trip all event i thought it would be oh, well, an amazing moment like well, ladies and gentlemen i, have I just wanted to do like a little backflip or something you know just a little tumble have you ever seen a horse fall it. it's not very gracious not, not no. matt mass the guy with the camera <laughs> oh the camera <laughs> oh my god ladies and gentlemen oh, we have briefly lost control of the podcast i don't know i don't even know what this is anymore no uh, in all reality <laughs> though um no, I mean uh, everything was great. I can't, I can't think of anything to add in there. I mean, it's at the point where there's nothing obvious to add in. So you know, maybe which is good. All the, all the, all the great maybe stuff. Snacks. Yeah, maybe yeah, snacks. Yeah, little snacks, like chocolate snacks. candies, sushi, maybe some chicken wings, or something. You yeah, know? steaks, lobsters, some something like that. Some fruit something available or nutrient. you know, a lot of nutrients. Yeah. Something good, right? Yeah. Ray, I'm sure you can help yeah, me even, with a list of what even even chocolate bars room. or something like that. So because yeah, yeah. lots of times you're not able to eat much leading up to a match, you get that little bit of that fucking. And jittery, then you just right? want something match be right before or it ends right. You need a little bit of energy or yeah, a little bit of sugar or something, right? So yeah. any specific type of chocolate like Snickers, Mars, fruit and nut, like no Belgium sh chocolate, you know, uh, straight from the factory. That probably wants like maple yeah. syrup. I'm guessing maple syrup. <laughs> Yeah, I'm good with Mars bars. I'm good with Mars bars. Yeah, or a couple lines of Coke. Hey, <laughs> he means like rows of bottles of of Coca Cola. Yeah, lines of Coke. yeah, Coca Cola. Oh, hey, Coca Cola. <laughs> I cannot believe in at the twilight of my career, oh, I'm actually taking drink orders on a podcast. Yeah, or a future. Yeah, we'll call the them Matt. drink orders. Two bloody Marys. We'll call <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey. You know what we need? We we need hang on. We need margarita machine or what it's called. You know what I mean? Margarita mm -hmm. blender. 
The margarita maker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's called a blender. Or, or we just need a bartender. Just for us. Just for us. Okay. Right? Matt, can I assign you with, (laughs) next time you're coming over, (laughs) do you mind bringing those big plastic jars of maple syrup? I'm serious, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I could. And 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 maple cookies. Mm. Maple cookies. You know the, 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 the ones that are the... shaped like the maple leaf with the fucking little maple. Yeah. Cream in the like middle. Those ones? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, but they I make you... they make good sugar the snacks for the green room as well. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Cream in the middle is like. Amazing. Also, Jesus. can we get okay. some sippy cups for Ray? Like just ones with lids a little bit because he has a problem spilling. I just want something with a lid, if that's possible. What's next? A booster seat for the commentary booth? It's, yeah, maybe you can I could get one of those straps and I could and I could wear Ray in front and I walk around with him with his feet dangling. And, and I say turn and you're like <laughs> <laughs> He's just a little guy. Oh, I would love that. Oh, I'll be no, like, turn, I have to say something. <laughs> I, I don't know. I hope fans will tell us if this was a good idea or a bad idea. Done. The I think would all love these that. are great ideas. There's <laughs> hey, there's no such thing as stupid questions and bad ideas, right? Um, well, uh, there, no, let me stop you right there. There are. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me, there are. But hey, you know what? Uh, Matt, uh, Derek, if you guys got to go, because um, we're about to just quickly look at the questions. If any questions from the fans, uh, Ray, you got this? Help me out okay. if there's any questions that need answering. Uh, you guys want to stick around and uh, have the or, or you, if you're busy, you can hit the road. If you, you, like. li- you literally just open the door and said, you guys want to stick around? I mean, yeah. no, I'll leave, Don. <laughs> it's okay. I can take a hit, bro. It's okay. Don, I Don, go. Because this, why are you texting me this saying, wasn't... kick them off? Why are you texting me saying, kick them off? <laughs> no, uh, no it's out. because this wasn't planned. Yeah, I just think because it wasn't planned. Thank you. Thank you for coming on board. Thank you for taking my call. Not you, Matt, because yeah, you didn't answer my off. message for a good like half hour. <laughs> exactly. Hey, guys, exactly. Uh, quick question. Quick question for both of you. So this time we did different press conferences. Uh, we did just li- literal face off on the table. It feels, I think it feels real because now you're looking at your opponent. It's table like it's going to be, right? Um, did you like that or did you like the old setup that we did or maybe other ideas? Derek, I like, I I like the new... Oh, you want to ask Derek? No, 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 we'll start with Derek. We'll start with Derek. We'll start. Uh, I, I liked it. <clears throat> it was cool. Um, it's kind of, I, I don't know, at least for ma- uh, my match with Matt, because I was pretty intense and he's Matt Mass intense. So it's kind of hard to field a lot of questions in that moment when you're that close, right? Because... Mm-hmm. It's kind of other things going on. So it might it might interfere with like great answers coming your way. It might just be like so it depends on kind of what you want out of it. Uh if you just want intensity and crap talking, then that'll happen. But if you want like really thought out answers, that might not happen in that moment. Um, but besides that, I mean I liked it. It was, you know, it was just trying to contain my my uh, aggression at that point. Matt, I sorry, I gave him I'll let him talk first because he lost the match. Yeah, you have to give him something. He oh, oh. lost oh, gracefully. Then. <laughs> Was it though gracefully? Okay, yeah. you know, <laughs> so, that's trying to be that's nice. graceful. Buddy picking on my buddy Derek here. That's right, we're buddies. <laughs> See, we're friends again. Hey? Don't worry, I got your back again now, bud. Hey, we're no longer Thanks. enemies. <laughs> Me and you, we're in this yeah. together. When this is all said and done, this podcast is done, me and you, we should get an apartment together. Eh? <laughs> hey, you should open uh, a bar or make a bed. Is that Anchorman? Is that Anchorman? Are you quoting Anchorman right now? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Be an apartment. <laughs> <laughs> I love carpet. I, I personally I love like carpet. the new way better myself. Yeah. You know, we'll get back. We'll get back being serious again here for a second, Don. Uh I personally like the new way better myself <laughs> just for the fact that you don't have to sit there through everybody else's mumbo jumbo bullshit. You can kind of be off on the side doing your own thing. When it's time to go up and talk, you go up and talk, but you're not sitting there trying to look pretty, 
you don't have people constantly on their phones as a distraction and everything else or wanting to get on their phones. So it's, yeah, it's, uh, I think it's a little more, a little more one-on-one. -on -one. You kind of get the aspect, not everybody else just sitting there waiting for everybody else to go or waiting for everybody else to finish, especially beneficial if you had Devin on the card. So, yeah. Well, but, but, uh, this was kind of like the first time we were trying it at King of the Table. What I'm, what we're trying to try to do next time is, Probably that is another thing that has to be rehearsed with the not so experienced or the new athletes, like where to look with the camera, because a lot of like I saw some some errors that could be improved, you know, because they were looking straight, but the camera was only getting there, especially when you're talking. So we'll we'll we'll, we'll do better next time. But I personally like that format as well. It's quick, it's intense, and it's match by match by match. But that's that's my uh, personal opinion. I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Okay, cool. Um, do we take some questions, Ray? Because that's I think that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them under the video, not on the live chat. Uh, we'll we'll get it on the next podcast episode we're gonna do. Uh, definitely and thank feedback. you. Feedback. Yeah, yeah. Feedback, any ideas. Yeah. We're open Matt to and Derek coming on, and you know, always fun. Always fun. Don't be mad. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much for you know. Supporting the epi episode one of Behind the Table. Yeah. 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 Well, we get the fun part, right? Fun okay. zone. <laughs> yeah. It's... Money's right. in Thank you so account. much, guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, Show me we, the money. We're going right. to finish this episode. Thank you all for watching, tuning in. Uh, leave your comments, your feedback, all the things. In, in oh, home. and don't forget our latest supporter. Go to thebeardstruggle.com. Use code CORESPORTS. It's a gift from our sponsor to the arm wrestling community. You get 21% off of all their products. They're now with us in every arm wrestling event. Um, you'll be seeing a lot of them. Yeah. So go check them out. What is it? Beer and Struggle? Beer Struggle. I cannot hear It's They're from Vancouver. The, the, they live in Vancouver, uh, by the way. It's Canadian. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do like... They're, it's, I, it's a really cool brand. They do beard balm, oils colognes, fragrances, they, the business. They're very, like, man stuff. Oh, they yeah, don't but sell do check out. They don't, they don't make beer? I thought they made beer. Beard. Beard. Beard, beard, beard struggle. Is struggle. Oh. Not beer struggle. But you've given I'm me so an idea. He's disappointed, Matt yeah. Max. we just disappointed. <laughs> Tell him to hit me up, Don. I got this luscious uh, thing going on my face. Yeah, well, we are check just, out. what is it, one month away from East versus West 12. Yes. What? Yes, yes. Uh, 32 days, I believe. Canada versus... No. Oh, no, 30 days, 30 days. 30 days away. Yeah. The uh, big one. Big yeah. one. Okay, guys. Oh, Thank you all big, for big, watching. Big. Thank you guys for being here. Don, Derek Smith. Click the link to buy all our pay-per-views, whether it's the East versus West, whether it's the King of the Table. The link is in the description. And thank you very much. I'm going to let you finish with your line, Ray. Yeah. That's my line. Thank you guys for watching. See you next time. Bye. I thought it was uh, stay strong and love armor. Oh, of course.